how many ways are there to play one piece of Bach? The music offers you so many choices. And how many ways are there to be a musician? Once again, the musical choices are endless. And it's not just playing music, it's a way of life, emotionally and spiritually rewarding, a way of giving and receiving something truly magical. I feel as if I'm part of a centuries-old tradition, a lone troubadour, a restless individual, an itinerant musician. In this short film, I shall try to explore what it means to be a musician. I'll attempt to explain what it feels like to play music and to discover why so many people want to involve themselves in music. In search of some answers, I'll be going on a journey along the South Downs Way from my hometown of Shoreham-by-Sea to the city of Chichester, where, at the end of my long walk, I'll play the music of J.S. Bach in the inspirational acoustic of Chichester Cathedral. I decided to be a musician when I was very small, indeed. I used to go upstairs to my dad's bedroom and I used to get the guitar out from under his bed and try and work out how to undo the case. And if I got that far, I'd then try and strum some chords. We're just coming up out of the uh, Ada River Valley. That's my home valley, my home river. And we're heading for Chanctonbury. Now, Chanctonbury is a very mis mysterious place. There's all sorts of tales of UFO sightings and devil worship. And there was even a team of scientists up here one night keeping watch for strange events. And the story goes that they lost the use of their limbs. <coughs> Did those strange events really happen? Well, we'd all say probably not, but then we've got this collective modern urge to rationalise everything. Perhaps music is one of the few remaining areas of our lives where we give ourselves permission to submit to the irrational, to more magical forces. Right, we've got some walking to do. Greetings. Of course, up on the downs now, you can, you can whiz along on your mountain bike listening to, I don't know, take your pick from 10 centuries of music, every continent of the world, plugged into your crash helmet. How wonderful. There are lots of famous examples of guitarists and lutenists, which I suppose is a related thing, isn't it? Earning their living, travelling about. Fernando Saw and Giuliani. They travelled around Europe, they had rich patrons to be the right music for. And of course, going back before then, there was the great John Dowland, the Elizabethan composer, one of the greatest English composers that ever lived. He was a humble lute strummer, and he was very, very good at wrestling money out of rich folk, Lady Hunston, for whom he composed My Lady Hunston's Toy Pouffet. And the King of Denmark, of course, for whom he wrote The King of Denmark's Galliard. Great tunes. It's all about that, though. Up on the downs, I get this tremendous sense of belonging. It's a sense of history. The landscape is littered with burial mounds, and sometimes I feel frustrated that I can't find their doors and look inside the hills. But when I play music, it's as if, well, I can. I first met Piers Adams about 20 years ago now, we've been good friends ever since, and here he is on top of Chanctonbury Ring. My good friend Piers, how are you doing? Hi, good, how are you? <laughs> Fantastic. I'm on a, I'm on a sabbatical. Uh -huh. I'm, trying, I'm trying to fathom out why on earth I still do music I after all these years. It's a very interesting question. What have you decided? Uh, well, I don't know yet. Um, What's well, a job? It's a job for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. And you're very successful at it. You go all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, is there more to it than that? Yeah, I think there is. I think um, uh, music gives, gives us all a lot of energy, I think. A lot of uh, good vibes, good feelings. I think just the... Uh, 
the act of performing is something which can really, really lift the performer as well as the audience. So, I mean, it's yep. a personal reason to do it. That's for sure. Um, I mean, if you go on stage, I don't know if you find this, you go on stage when you're feeling a bit ill, and then, you know, after two hours of putting in a lot of energy and concentration, you come out feeling a whole lot better. Absolutely, yeah. Which is, which is amazing. So there's something in that. So you and I quite often, of course, find ourselves playing in places of worship. They're great because the acoustics are good. Mm -hmm. Playing in churches and cathedrals. Does that affect the way that you play, do you think, beyond the acoustic? I mean, I think the great thing about churches is they're often placed in very powerful places in the landscape. And I think, you know, certain places you can really feel that power and then begin to use it when you perform. Yes, yeah, they're designed to make contact with something or other, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. As, as is that instrument you're That's wielding right. there. So shall we, shall we play a tune? A fine idea. Of course, playing music is more than a job. Piers knows that. It's something you just can't leave alone. It's something from right deep down inside you that you have to keep in touch with. Would I call myself a religious person? I don't know, I'm a musician. Many musicians would say that it is like having a religion. I mean, why else would you do it? You see famous musicians driving around in battered old cars only less than a window cleaner would. And they still do it. It's a tough life. But it is a spiritual life. Some people say that you should teach music as you would teach a religion. I'm not really sure what they mean by that. I mean, you can teach, you can teach the nuts and bolts of music, the Pythagorean scale and the laws of harmony and counterpoint and bar lines and key signatures and all that stuff. But really, there's uncertainty after that. What is it that music enables you to reach? What does it put you in touch with? Now, Schopenhauer, the great 19th century philosopher, talks very specifically about music um, as being set apart from any other art form. He says that, that when you listen to or play music, you're actually making contact with a kind of great universality. But again, there's nothing specific about it. There's nothing definite in the way that a religious doctrine offers you definite answers. Ficino, the Renaissance thinker, now what did he say? He, he talked about the cosmos and that music enables you to participate in some kind of cosmic process. What does that mean? What does that mean exactly? Oh, but surely music is just a load of vibrations. It's only those dissonances in the harmonic series that make minor chords sound sad, nothing else. Any more emotional explanations are surely too full of uncertainty and about as difficult to prove as the existence of the Higgs boson. Later that day, I met up with my old friend, Father Marcus Ronchetti, the vicar of Midhurst. I was really curious what a priest would want to add to all of this. The faith is an interesting thing, you see, the opposite of faith 
is not doubt, which most people think it is. The opposite of faith is certainty. Faith itself is a mystery, and, and I'm certain of very, very little. I'm certain that I believe in God, but I can't prove that God exists. That's faith. I'm certain um, that I'm loved by God, and I'm forgiven by God, but I can't prove it. It's faith. It's faith that makes it mysterious. Got you. Faith that makes it an adventure. Um, and it's mystery that makes it um, something that you can't ever have enough of. So here we are inside All Hallows, wool beading. And I've been waiting all day to do this, to play Bach on my banjo with the help of my clothes pegs. And the banjo is tuned like a cello, so it's perfect for playing this particular prelude. And there's no disrespect to Bach intended. I love his music dearly. I know how sacred it is. But I also love this sound. Sitting playing Bach in Marx's church gave me time to think about what he'd said. The opposite of faith is certainty. What a great vision to strengthen your faith by embracing uncertainty itself. J.S. Bach expressed his Christian faith through music. His music was an offering to God. Today most musicians feel tremendous uncertainty about the very idea of faith leaving them with the music alone. But for me, their music still feels connected to Schopenhauer's idea of the thing itself. At last, there it is, Chichester Cathedral. That's the focal point of the journey. And we're going to be wandering down there, where I'm going to play the guitar, and we're going to meet the Dean, Nicholas Frayling. I think, um, itinerant musician or not, the building really draws you in. Let's go. So here I was at the end of my long walk. I'd had time to think about what made me tick as a musician, but now I was just impatient to get my guitar out of the box and communicate with this great building. Oh, hello, Richard. See you You've had quite a journey, haven't you? I certainly have, yes. There we go. Wow. Here's our little cathedral. Now, it's been almost a year since I set foot in here. Yes, I remember Fantastic. when you were here. Great. Made a great sound. impression on you then, didn't it? And, uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, it's the acoustic, of course, when you walk into one of these buildings, yeah. that's the, yeah. you know, apart from the awesome space. Sure. It's the sound that immediately hits me anyway. Well, of course, what you're doing, really, is what people have done for hundreds of years, which is finishing their journey here. Yes. Medieval pilgrims used to come here. Yes. And they used to want to come in, say their prayers, go up to the shrine of St Richard, who was our greatest saint bishop 750 yes. years ago, which is where you're going to play some music, I think. Um, and uh, it was the culmination of a long journey, physical journey like you, but a spiritual journey as well. Of course. So in a way, you're treading in the footsteps of people who've uh, been doing this a long time before you. Does Let's this go. mean that music's actually been sung here for, what, every day? Sung Across and... Across those centuries. Sung and played every day, as far as we know, in war and peace, because the cathedral exists for the worship of God. And worship without music is really, really poor. You know, it's impoverished, it's not the same at all. You know that as a musician. And when you put together music for the glory of God in a building which is made for the glory of God, yes. then all sorts of unimaginable things begin to happen. You know, our feeling is that a cathedral like this without music is like a horse without a carriage. Well, it, it, must, it must reinforce the, the process of worship. Yes. A service, for example, like Choral Evensong, half past five every day, Basically, one priest and the choir perform that. Mm. It is a performance, but it's a performance for the glory of God. But it's and an oasis for the people that... The congregation, so. isn't and it? And the people who come, you know, let it sort of wash over them. If I've had, a, a <laughs> to be blunt, a hell of a day, and I come in here, there's something very healing about that offering of worship. And that is because of the music. Yeah. 
it's, it's, it is in a way a kind of high, high way to heaven. Um, it was Donald Tovey, who was a great um, uh, um, musicologist, yeah. who described a particular piece of Bach as a highway to heaven. Mm. And I think that's a brilliant description. Well, some people say Bach is the word of God, don't they? It's well, I mean, he was, he was undoubtedly inspired. Yeah. The whole thing was an offering of God. He would put on the top of some of his scores to the greater glory of God. So there's, that, there's that connectivity that, that, that music offers in a way, and I suppose oh, yes. if, if, if worship offers you a kind of oasis of mm. you know, contemplation yes. and, and, uh, and peace, almost compulsory And of course it's time, I mean Bach is timeless, of course. I mean, you ha I know that you are greatly drawn to the music mm. of Bach because it is actually a way into something much deeper. It is. And the combination of Bach and a stunning building like this, and the sense that you're offering this as a kind of higher, higher offering is something really very special. So there I was again, another itinerant musician at the end of a journey. And again I was playing Bach on my guitar, today's version, today's musical choices. And I was directly affected by the building, my physical situation directing me down different musical pathways. And the connectivity was there too, thanks to J.S. Bach, a wooden box, some bits of string. For me, music holds open a door, a door to the vast and beautiful unknown.